Hey, this is Jim regarding the Clemente Figuera 1908 patent that I've been working on for quite some time now. Built, I don't know, a dozen models. <clears throat> Here is my latest revelation. I posted it on my site, mooker.com, which is a forum for open source free energy builders and researchers. So join the Mooker forum. Okay, the Clemente Figuera. Now, conventional science doesn't think this is possible. Maybe they do, but according to the AI I've used, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, okay, the missing component is the transformers, the isolation between the output circuit and the input circuit. There has to be isolation. The patent doesn't show it. It, it, might, spe it might kind of hint to it when it says, in no means can the inducer communicate with the induced. Okay, it does say that, so I think that means isolation. And then everything harmonizes and it does what it's supposed to do. It creates a positive feedback loop that we all yearn for. Okay, so we're inputting positive biased waves with this resistor rig and a commutator. Okay, I'm replacing it with MOSFETs. I'll get into that in a minute. But I am using the resistor rig. Okay, and out of the resistor rig comes into a primary of a transformer and it grounds into the supply ground and the other wave goes into primary of a transformer and grounds at the same ground. So as one's growing, one's shrinking. As one's growing, one's shrinking. One's getting bright, one's getting dim. One's filling with energy, one's emptying with energy. Okay, as the contacts of the commutator go around. Okay, this inducts into the secondaries. Now the phases are going to be two phases 180 degrees out of phase positive bias like it's shown here and these two phases are constructive phases which are the exact same as two phases 90 degrees out of phase on full AC which means you could series them together to create one wave output and when you series them together you connect one coil to the other coil guess what one positive goes through the load then the negative lead of that one becomes the positive of the other one going through. And this negative becomes the positive of this one. Then it switches and it goes the other way. So we create the positive feedback loop that we're all looking for without connecting these right to the supply ground where it just goes into the supply ground because we don't want that. We want that energy to push that positive sine wave down into the negative territory, negative territory to give us the energy back to the source or back to the other side through the resistor rig. So the resistor rig accomplishes that because there's no diodes, there's no flipping polarity, there's no weird stuff going on. It's just wires connecting that have resistance. So you are gonna burn heat, but it's able to send current through the resistor rig and back and through the resistor. And we might even be able to do something else with diodes that I'm gonna try tapping diodes off to avoid this resistor rig as much as possible. We'll get to that part. But anyway, when you isolate your secondary output circuit from the main circuit, you no longer have to ground these coils into the supply ground. Now they ground into the other coil that's calling for energy while the other one's sending energy. You see? It's a type of resonance. Now resonance doesn't necessarily always mean that your coil is vibrating at the same frequency as, as the input, okay? It could also mean that you have two different sides of a circuit that are in resonance, whereas one's calling for energy, one's giving it. One's calling for it, one's giving it. And it's ping-ponging back and forth, going around in the resonant loop. Okay, so that's what this system is meant to do. And no one could ever get it to do it because they're not isolating the input and output circuit to connect this directly to the part that's calling for the energy. Okay, so I built this system and I'll be showing it soon with videos once I do some load tests where I have my Arduino going to eight <clears throat> P-channel MOSFETs to take the place of the commutator. This way I could adjust the frequency <clears throat> without running a motor faster. I don't have sparking and I don't have to make all big commutators. No one likes making commutators. Okay, and also in case I need to delay at the top a little more and shape this wave, I could do it all with programming instead of physically grinding away and making a commutator. Okay, so 
These fire one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. They go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, just like the Figuera one did. These all go, they make before break. So one comes on, two comes on at the same time as one goes off. So there's no drop in electricity. So nothing ever collapses. There's never a collapsing of any fields or any electric because one comes on before the other one goes off. Then one comes on before the other one goes off. So there's always current flowing through. One side of the resistor rig, which is this sucker, feeds one transformer primary, the other one feeds the other transformer primary. As one is at peak, one is at zero. As this one's at peak, this one's at zero. I'm not gonna say absolute zero because a little bit of current's gonna get through this big resistor rig that I have going, but it's very low. Anyway, so when it goes back and forth, this now can make it through and go right back into the one that's calling for energy. The one that's going down, this could go right through in the same direction as this is. So basically it reinforces both sides. Now, how is this gonna work out when I put my loads in between my transformers or my triplets? I'm gonna have to experiment to see. Is it gonna give the energy back that it takes? Is it gonna be lens free? We're gonna find out. But this system accomplishes the task of a generator where you have a rotating coil and the coil hooks up to a battery and you're never switching the leads on the battery or changing the direction wire of the coil. You're just keeping that connection directly on those two leads of the coil and rotating the coil creating AC. And you're creating two polarities as it passes the output coil with one polarity. Now this is doing that. We're using one polarity input, one polarity is always going into here. And we're creating a system that's creating two polarities on the output. So more to come. Join the Mooker forum and uh, open source free energy research and builders. And let's get together and make this a reality.